Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, The Past, Present, and Future of Resin-Based Coatings for Ships. We have some brief housekeeping before we start. Your phones are on mute. If you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A box in the corner of your screen, and we'll answer them at the end of today's session, time permitting, or via email after. And you can always send questions to MaPay Digital at mapay.com. We also invite you to visit the Products for the Marine Industry page of our website, www.mapay.us, which contains system solutions, real life case studies, brochures, and more. Now, without further delay, I'd like to introduce today's speakers, Mike Daniels and Guido Sardi. Mike Daniels is the Technical Services Manager from MaPay's Marine Division. He has 28 years of experience at MaPay Corporation and a total 35 years of experience in the construction industry. This experience includes technical assistance and product training for marine markets in the United States, the Caribbean, and South America. He's currently responsible for on-site product support, product recommendations, and performing product training on the installation of underlayments, flooring systems related to marine applications, and the evaluation of new products or systems in development. Mike is an active ASTM, F06, and C21 committee member. Guido Sardi is the business development manager from MAPE's US Marine Division and is responsible for market share and new product development. He joined MAPE in 2016, bringing his 20 years of experience in the marine industry to help foster the growth of MAPE's marine line of products. His experience in the marine industry includes international sales for various sectors ranging from pumps for hulls and engines to resin, resin floorings. Guido also has experience in consulting gained through his work in the Italian Research and Consultancy Center owned by Fincantieri, one of the world's foremost cruise ship builders. Now, I welcome them both to the microphone. Mike, Guido, the floor is yours. Thank you for joining us today. We're gonna to talk a little bit about the past, present, future of resin-based coatings used on ships. Now the marine industry has found over the years that the use of resin-based coatings in marine vessels can have certain advantages and the coatings on the ship fall into several categories. Now these categories include coatings for protection from the elements, coatings for resistance, uh, corrosion resistance, decorative coatings, anti-foul coatings, and seamless flooring, which is what we're gonna focus on today and seamless finishes. In our discussion today, we'll be focusing on the past, present, and future of resin-based seamless decorative coatings that are used on floors, walls, and in immersed applications on marine vessels. The topics we'll be covering today are going to include resin coatings first used on ships for flooring and walls, the present types of resin-based coatings used, and then future products that are available now. started out by looking at resin coatings on ships. They were first used at a time when most exterior decks on the ships had teak wood decking that incorporated a flexible sealant between the planks. Now, this type of finished flooring, while it was beautiful and durable, presented some challenges. It was expensive and the weight and the maintenance were issues for the ship. These floorings also required a special skill set to install. The use of resin-based coatings on cruise ships began with shipyards seeking to find new types of decking that they could use that would solve some of the issues they had with the wood decking. The shipyards discovered that a resin-based coating could provide a seamless, lighter, less expensive, and easier to maintain flooring. They started to use and evaluate in smaller areas of the ship several options for resin-based floors, including an oil-based paint, 
for exterior and interior areas to protect and for decorative effect. They also tried two-part epoxies, internal areas for flooring and areas needed a durable coating and for chemical resistance. And they also looked at polyurethane, both single and two component that had decorative effects, including granules and other types of materials. Looking at the oil-based paint on exterior, on exterior decks <clears throat> was used in some cases, but it wasn't very attractive because as you can see in the photo, you can see the seams in the deck where the welds occur on the metal. Now, when you paint a deck, obviously, you can see whatever's underneath that paint unless you do something to smooth the area. Now, in an internal area that was maybe for service, this is not an issue with aesthetics. But durability with a single coat oil-based paint really wasn't very good they started to shift in those areas to using an epoxy-based systems because they gained abrasion resistance and chemical resistance, so you had better durability. But for exterior parts of the ship, they found that these coatings could have issues with yellowing if the coating were exposed to the sunlight. One of the early uses of a resin-based system was used in the sports areas of the ship. So you can see these photographs. It looks like one solid resin coating, but this is actually is a granule-based coating. How it works is what to apply a flexible adhesive layer to the deck, and then they would apply granules that were colored rubber granules to the wet surface until the, the surface was saturated, kind of like a sand broadcast to rejection. This could be applied to the ship in a single layer or multiple layers to get a softer floor that would be safer say, for children's play areas. The final layer was a clear sealer that was thought would make the surface easier to clean and maintain. However, in use, it was still difficult to clean due to the porous structure of the coating. One good thing about the floors was that they were very durable and had very long life cycles. They can still be found on some ships today, either exposed or under newer decking systems that have been laid over the top. The next evolution of resin-based flooring was a flexible colored polyurethane-based resin that could be used as the floor there were some advantage over the granule-based floor, including that it was monolithic, easier to clean and maintain, and also a faster process to form a seamless deck, as it wasn't a multi-layer application. The decorative patterns could be applied in contrasting colors and now could be easily incorporated into the floor. Also, you could add contrasting colored granules of rubber into the mix to give you special effects as needed. The designers together with the shipyards experimented with different looks that could be formed in this flooring, including complex shapes, colors, and patterns. You could even find some resin-based coatings that have a tile effect pattern on ships today that were applied at these times. And you can see in the photographs, the one on the left is actually a tile effect appearance. The next notable evolution of the resin-based decking was the development of a seamless resin decking product that approximated the look of a teak deck. The first examples of this flooring were smooth finished and did not have the appearance of wood grain on the surface. You can see in the photos that this is kind of one dimensional and plasticky looking, especially when you look at the, the far right photo, you'll see there's a real teak wood deck right next to the synthetic polyurethane deck material. Now we fast forward to the present time. The ships now use polyurethane resin-based flooring on all open decks. And this is done almost exclusively. 
you're not seeing much of the wood teak any longer. The use of resin-based systems for open decks extends to applications for your general public areas, your pool beaches, sports court areas, running tracks, children's play areas. The base polyurethane resin can be tinted to almost any color. And because it's a seamless application applied in almost infinite patterns and effects, it's designed to be lightweight, tough, slip resistant, color fast and non-yellowing. The difference now is that the finishing of the decks with the resin-based flooring is now changed. The areas where the synthetic teak effect decking was applied, we sand the surface with a very coarse sandpaper to give it a very coarse texture that approximates a wood grain. This also adds traction in those areas. And we also make end cuts or cross cuts across what we would see as the planks to give it a more of a plank look like you would see in a real wooden deck application. The other areas where you see the colored effects are typically sanded to a smooth finish. And that allows for a very nice looking surface and very easy to clean surface. The epoxy resins are being used primarily in galleys, mechanical rooms, garbage rooms, and other service areas on the ships. These are two-part epoxy coatings, and they're light, durable, and wear resistant, as well as chemical resistant, making them ideal for the service areas of the ship. And because they're not exposed to ultraviolet radiation, we don't deal with issues with yellowing. MAPE's present use of resin-based coatings on ships includes an aliphatic polyurethane resin-based flooring for open decks and the epoxy-based flooring for internal areas of the cruise ship applications. These resin-based formulas are designed to be lightweight, tough, slip-resistant, color-fast, and non-yellowing. And below, you can see on the slide that we have several options. The MAPA deck design is our two component polyurethane solid color decking that we use with EPDM rubber gram, and we form coatings in the same areas, the general public spaces, like what we would see on the ship. The MAPA deck teak design is a two part aliphatic polyurethane that we use to form a synthetic teak look deck. And this is also for your open decks or they use them in internal deck applications. And then finally, the Mappa Deck Epple Floor, which is our high performance two-part epoxy coating. Now this one can be colored in any color we need and it's applied in corridors, mechanical rooms or galleys in a seamless application. It also allows us the flexibility to form designs or patterns into the flooring because we've added color to it. Now remember that these resin systems really look a lot better if we address the issues with the steel deck. Remember back when we talked about the oil-based paint and seeing the seams and the welds and the rise and fall in the deck? Now we use certain underlayments to fill the deck and smooth the deck. And we covered these in a previous presentation, but I'll quickly go over them. We've got the Mappa Deck Primer 200, which is a standard primer for our polyurethane decking materials, including our underlayments. And we have the Mappa Coat Guard 100 product, which is an anti-corrosion primer that can be used with cement-based underlayments, as well as polyurethane and epoxy materials. And you see down here that we have several options with the underlayments. We have three different versions of the polyurethane screeds, the Ultra, the Mopadec Light Screed, the Mopadec Flexi Screed, and the Mopadec Ultra Screed. The main difference on these different underlayments is 
weight and function. For example, with the light screed, it's one kilogram per liter density. The flexi screed has a little heavier density, but is flexible and designed for children's play areas. The ultra screed is very lightweight. And then the Apple screed light, again, same density as the light screed at one kilogram per liter, can be used underneath the Apple floor product. Now the new resin-based coatings also can be enhanced by adding additional finish layers that can seal or color the surface. So you'll see here that we have Mappacoat Finish HP, Mappadec Finish 100, 100 TS, 111R and 111TSR, Mappacoat Finish HTT and Mappadec Marine Sealer. In simple terms, the Mappadec Marine Sealer is a clear coat that we apply over the polyurethane resin-based deck systems, both the Mappadec Teak design and the Mappadec design as a general sealer to make the surface easier to clean. When we get into the Mappa Coat Finish HDT, this is a clear finish typically used to protect the polyurethane resins inside of a pool from chemical attack. And then the Mappa Deck Finish HP is actually a colored resin coating that we can use to add effects or colors over a polyurethane screed or over a polyurethane coating as accents. The Mappadec Finish 100 and Mappadec Finish 111R are colored coatings that are water-based and designed to go over the top of a surface of either Apple screed or the lights over the, uh, sorry, <laughs> to go over the Mappadec design. The 100TS and the 111TSR are clear coatings, also designed more like a sealer and a finish. Now we're going to move into marine systems solutions and examples. And I'm going to hand over the microphone to Mr. Guido Sardi, who's going to talk about these. Guido? Thank you, Mike. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. Okay, mm, I would like to give you just um, a quick overview about a typical system of resin flooring installed on board. Mike already mentioned, uh, we cannot apply a resin top coat, a resin, highly decorative resin top coat directly on a steel deck, but the surface needs to be uh, leveled. Uh, the reason of leveling is that the steel surface is usually quite uneven. So first of all, we need to level it and then on top of it uh, apply a top coat. Before applying the underlayment, uh, we typically apply an adhesion primer. Like in this slide, you can see that we have applied the Mappecode Guard 100 as an addition primer. Uh, the Mappe Deck Light Screed is an underlayment because this is an open deck. So typically on an open deck, you have a polyurethane system. So the Mappe Deck Light Screed is a polyurethane underlayment on top of which we apply in this case, the Mappe Deck Tick Design followed by a sealer to protect the surface. Um, it's important to uh, reaffirm that what we are showing you today are resin system which are poured on board by specialized applicators. So these are not um, prefab system. The advantage of applying the systems on board is to create a seamless application which will protect the steel deck underneath against corrosion. Next slide, Mike, thank you. This is the same principle uh, applied on a sport area. 
you see here an example of a jogging track. In this case, the system is based by the same layer. So we have an addition primer, an underlayment, and a top coat. The difference uh, on sports areas is that we typically suggest to apply um, a product which is more elastic. Uh, in this case, it's called the Mapadec soft design. Next slide. This is again just an example of um, the flexibility of the resin material. The system is the same that I described before. So the principle is always primer, underlayment, top coat, and sealer. In this case, you can see, first of all, one difference is that uh, we, on the item number three, we are applying, we're supposed to apply uh, the Mapadec Ultra Screed, which is uh, ultra lightweight polyurethane aliphatic underlayment. Uh, reason is, uh, especially on higher decks, uh, um, owners are requiring to have even a lighter system than usual. Uh, in, this, in this case, we um, made an example of the Mapadec Ultra Screed to um, show and emphasize that with resin, which is already a lighter material compared to more traditional flooring, uh, you can go even lighter in case of need, uh, properly selecting uh, um, the right underlayment for the scope. Uh, that's why we are used to um, suggest to our customers the right product and right systems to be used based on their requests. Another notable thing from this slide is on item number five, or number four, sorry, the Mapa Deck design, you see it's in three different colors. And as Mike showed also in uh, um, a previous uh, slide, the resin gives you the opportunity to create uh, repetitive patterns or unique patterns on top of the surface. The resin, a top coat, is not a paint. So you have to consider that everything that you see as a pattern or as a drawing is not painted, is in full thickness. So we have at least, let's say, three millimeters of a thickness of a top coat, three to five millimeters typically. So whatever you see, any kind of patterns you see on the top of the surface is going to be not only on the top of it, but it will be on the full thickness of the layer itself. Next slide. OK. Um, this is a typical uh, system applied in the galley. Like uh, my colleague Mike was explaining, in this case, being an internal area, we do suggest to go with uh, an epoxy uh, resin system. Uh, epoxy is a heavy duty uh, flooring. So we typically apply um, it on the top of the system to protect uh, and to have more durability and resistance to the scratches or to the heavy use. That's why typically you can find the system in a galley or in the uh, crew corridor, in the crew mess, in storage rooms, in marshalling areas on board of a cruise ship. Next. This is more or less the same system on a different, uh, using a different uh, underlayment, because in the slide before we have used a kind of hybrid system with a cementitious lightweight underlayment. This is instead a full epoxy resin system consisting of uh, um, an underlayment, which is the Eposcrit Light epoxy based, the two component, the top coat, which is the Mapadec Epofloor, to component epoxy resin, 
and MapDAC Finish 100, which is a two-component matte aliphatic polyuretan uh, finish. In this case, there's no need of primer because the epoxy underlayment, MapDAC Epoxide Light, is very surface tolerant and can be applied on top of the steel deck to level it after a suitable mechanical preparation. Next slide. This is uh, another example of resin system we can find on board. In this case, this is one of the more complex system uh, because is the one is the resin system we apply on the pull trunk on a pull trunk. The pull trunk is one of the most delicate areas on a ship, so it needs a particular care. In this case, we apply um, the Mapecot Guard 100 which is our adhesion primer and also with excellent anti-corrosion characteristics. We do typically level the bottom of the floor with the Mapedec Light Screed, which is the same polyurethane underlayment uh, I, we explained you before. And then the difference is that, as you can see, item number four, Mapedec Light Screed Tixo. This is a polyurethane uh, two component, uh, uh, underlayment with the tixotropic characteristics. So uh, this is the product that we are going to use on the vertical walls of the pool trunk to level them and to again same thing that on the bottom of the then on the flooring on the horizontal surface to level the unevenness of the vertical walls which are again in uh, steel material if needed. After that, we cover the bottom of the floor with our MAPEDEC design, so with a polyurethane uh, two-component uh, um, resin material, while we typically paint uh, all the walls uh, with the MAPECOT Finish HP, which is a polyurethane uh, colored, uh, um, highly chemical resistant, uh, uh, finishing coat, which Mike explained before. After that, we have to apply two or three layers of a final coating, which will be the Mapecoat Finish TS, which is a transparent finishing. This is very important, and the reason why we apply more than one layer is that you should consider that the pool trunk uh, containing a water is, is going to be um, attacked by the water which is full of chlorine and sometimes the ships use also salty water with chlorine so this kind of water is going to be the most aggressive agent you can find uh, on a pool. Next slide. Okay, um, here are some examples of uh, what I described you before starting from the left we have a jogging track. Um, this is an application done on the Carnival Miracle. And basically, it was a resurfacing of an existing uh, resin flooring done with our Mapedec design in one color, on which uh, we spread it um, rubber granules. Uh, the picture in the middle is the Carnival Pride pool trunk. This is a refurbishment done some years ago. Whatever you see, the dolphin, the curved lines are done in resin material. On the right side, a typical example of an open deck. In this case, it's the Carnival Miracle, the deck nine after the Serenity area. And uh, I would like to emphasize, uh, following what uh, Mike said, that what you see the teak is nowadays the the teak imitation. Sorry, is nowadays the standard on board all new ships being built uh, um, in the shipyards. Uh, so there's the use of real teak is very limited nowadays to high luxury cruise ships, mainly concentrated on pool areas. So this makes you understand how the resin um, 
came and is nowadays the standard of the cruise industry. Next slide, Mike, thank you. Okay, some other examples of uh, resin uh, floorings. From the, this is uh, different areas on board of GMV La Superba, La Suprema Excelsior. These are three ferries connecting Genoa in Italy to the island of Sardinia. And you can see the first two pictures. Um, you can see the Fido area. So it's an open deck because being a ferry that customers can take their dogs their animals with and so this area is used to go outside with their own animals and um, the patterns you see in the picture uh, the detail you see in the number two this is not paint again it's inlaid so the uh, drawing you see the pattern you see is in full thickness and this gives a great advantage because once you maintain the floor you can sand it and you will have the same pattern on the whole thickness of the top coat. It's not going to disappear after washing it or, or sanding it. The picture number three is the children area. Again, it's, um, it's done in Mapadex soft design. So this is one of those examples on which uh, being an area where the kids work, we need to give, we need to supply and apply a more elastic flooring. And the last picture is um, related to the crew cabin. Again, uh, for uh, hygiene and health, uh, the owner decided to remove the carpet, which is the standard on many ships, and apply a seamless flooring, which uh, could be easily um, washed and maintained. Next one. Okay, this is one of the most uh, recent applications we have done during uh, 2021. Uh, this is the tic-tac-toe game um, applied on four ships of Carnival, the Horizon, Sunshine, Panorama and Vista. And you can see whatever you see here is all done in resin and is all done in, uh, so it's not painted, that is in full thickness. Next one. This is again a typical example of, uh, say, a real case of an epoxy resin installed uh, uh, in a galley. So what happened here is that uh, on Costa Favolosa, the um, original flooring, which was tile, was removed, and at the place that we have installed uh, an uh, epoxy resin flooring, uh, on top of which uh, we have applied. Uh, um, colored uh, polyurethane finishing coat with anti-slip particles because of course in an area like uh, uh, a galley uh, safety is very important uh, you need to apply a heavy duty flooring and you need to make it anti-slip next one another application this is a bit of a mix from the left uh, you can see a lobby area on the deck zero of the ship which is done in uh, mapedactic design because basically this is an area on which uh, uh, the passengers are walking in and out the ship on the middle and on the right side is a typical example of the crew corridor which is also called i-95 corridor this is uh, uh, in this case as you can see also from the objects uh, laying on the floor um, we need a more high heavy duty and durable flooring therefore we have uh, um, installed uh, an epoxy system next slide okay mike i leave the word back to you now okay <clears throat> Now, the future trend with the cruise ships. Now, thank you, Guido. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the future trends in cruise ships. And they appear to be with larger vessels and that they want to maintain the luxurious appearance of the older ships, but they don't want the penalty of the added weight or complexity. So they need uh, these new ships are much larger and they, the weight that they place up on the 15th deck can be a much bigger issue regarding stability and also can impact their use of fuel. Now, with all these new trends, MAPE has developed some new exciting products 
they'll meet the goals of the cruise lines for a lightweight, easy to maintain, durable finish resin surfaces. Now we have some new products. We have a product called Mopedec Teak Evolution. Now what this product is, it's a two-part aliphatic polyurethane based on a next generation synthetic teak effect look. This actually has the look of real wood grain in its implied state. So it's about as close to real teak as you're gonna get in a seamless resin deck. The next product is our Mopedec Terrazzo. Now the Mopedec Terrazzo is, is a little different. Terrazzo is typically epoxy or cement. The particular one we're making is a two-part epoxy terrazzo, but it's designed to be flexible and resilient for application on a ship. It also meets the stringent standards required by the International Maritime Organization, or IMO, and is certified. The Mopedic Miram is the next product. Mira is also an aliphatic polyurethane, but this one is a moldable trowel applied coating that can be used on walls, ceilings, and floors, as well as pools for internal and external areas. It's unique in the sense that we can mold it into any shape or pattern that we want. It's very lightweight and flexible. So they can use they can apply plaster patterns or any type of decorative effect to a surface or even make it look like a piece of stone. The next product is our Mapa Deck, Mapo, Mapa, Mapa Deck Mono Design. The Mono Design is a water-based product. It's a fine textured single component aliphatic polymer tried trowel applied coating. Now it's also used to form seamless effects on both floors and wall applications. A little thinner than the Miram but you can still apply some very, very nice decorative effects. Some people call these uh, micro coatings or micro toppings. Here's an example of what the Mapadec Teak Evolution looks like. As you can see, we have a beautiful wood grain texture and we have the typical lines we see where the sealant would be between the planks. Again, most of the people I show this photo, they, they say to me, wow, that looks like real wood. And then they look at the sides of it and realize that it's a seamless resin. The next one is the Mapadec Terrazzo. The Terrazzo is a very cool product in that it can be applied on a surface and using different colors of the resin and different aggregates, as well as different types of aggregates. Some people mix metals, glass, all times, it really the, the limit is your imagination in many cases with the terrazzo. It allows so many different effects. This is a polished finish applied on the ships and it's monolithic, meaning that it's very, very easy to maintain for the ships. The Miram, as you can see, is a, it can be multicolored or single colored, depending on the particular application. It's thixotropic, meaning that it can be applied on a ceiling, on a wall, or on a floor to get the texture you want or the effect you want, and very, very durable. It can also be immersed. So, for example, someone could conceivably take a, a pool body and make it look like one big slab of stone using this material and the systems we were talking about earlier with the underlayments and primers. The mono design, as you can see, is a little bit thinner application, but still you can get those trolled effects or smooth effects. It's very, very durable and abrasion resistant. So it is suitable for use on floors as well as walls. And I'm gonna turn this back over to Guido, who's gonna to talk to us a little bit about how we've applied these products on ships. Guido? Thank you, Mike. 
Yeah, like Mike said, this is the products that you are looking now are what we believe uh, uh, represent the future, uh, the evolution of uh, resin uh, uh, floorings. Of course, uh, it's, uh, it's a process. So we are designing new products and promoting new products and see how uh, owners or architects, uh, especially the architects who are specifying this kind of products, uh, react. Um, so here we have one of the first application of our Mapedec Mono design. This is an area on deck five aft, it's the music hall, and uh, on the ship uh, Oasis of the Seas owned by Royal Caribbean. In this case, the use of mono design is there was an old upholstery on this area that has been removed by a marine contractor and then we were asked to cover the walls uh, with the mono design to have a monolithic effect that this was done in two different color one was like a brown rusty color and the other one was more look like a cementitious surface like Mike said before, um, the flexibility of resin and especially products like in this case the Mapedec Mono Design was limited to the internal areas or the mirror, which is can be installed both or it's in or in internal and uh, or, and external areas, is that this flexibility allows really to or recreate any kind of effect uh, that uh, designers and architects uh, are, are asking. And typically in, in our daily job, we replicate different finishings, maybe coming from the materials which are completely different from a resin floor or a resin material into a resin pattern that we can replicate on board with all the advantages of, a resin, uh, of the resin itself. Next slide. Okay, this is the Mapatactic evolution that Mike uh, explained before. And this is the real application, which uh, is the difference from, uh, I mean, as you can see, something is to see a very nice sample and something else uh, is to see the application or the material live. In this case, you can see the application of the Mapedec Tick Evolution on a balcony of a ship. Actually, this is not a real balcony or it is a real balcony, but it's not installed uh, physically on a ship, but it's installed uh, um, at, at the Innovation Lounge. The Innovation Lounge is um, a showroom uh, that talks about interior and exterior sea products for the hospitality industry. And uh, it's a place based in Miami. Let me spend just a, a few words about this place. It's a place that were, that is showcasing uh, highly technological materials, sustainable, and creative products. I do suggest you to Google it and take a look at this place or visit them. And we have some floorings installed there, one of which is the Mapedectic Evolution. And uh, so if you can go there, you can touch the material and walk on it by yourself. As I said, this is one of the first application we have done, and we believe this can become a new standard in the cruise industry, especially on special areas, very exclusive areas like uh, um, sweet balconies or high-end cruise ship for pool decks uh, and so on. Next one, Mike, thank you. Okay, Mike was telling you about the terrazzo and this is based on our feedback, uh, one of the most uh, successful new resin system uh, we, are, we have developed. Um, 
two different applications, one on the Viking Sea in the World Cafe and uh, the Viking Star on the restaurant floor. The some terrazzo, the Mappedec terrazzo replicates the old terrazzo La Veneziana and with the advantages of resin seamless flooring, lightweight, easy to maintain, and IMO MD certified. Is suitable for interior areas only. Next one. This is another kind of uh, terrazzo flooring, and this is again the Innovation Lounge uh, in Miami. I explained to you right before, and this is just to show you the flexibility of a resin flooring because this kind of pattern uh, was was recreated based on a design that we got from the architect, and we were replicating, applying it on site. Next one. Okay, basically that's um, an overview of all uh, the resin from past to present and the future. We are pretty sure that more new materials in, in resin will come soon, but this is at least the state of the art for MAPE nowadays. Thank you guys, that was uh, really very comprehensive and interesting and um, we'll open up the floor now for questions. We uh, have one already. Um, someone is asking, and I think this was probably answered, but uh, we'll just ask it so you can reinforce. Um, they want to know how the dark joint lines um, are applied in the wood look decks. I can answer that one. It's, it's actually the process of making the synthetic teak effect. Uh, we talked about doing the different colors and patterns in it. The teak effect is applied in a monolithic pour. So we pour the, the, the teak design on the floor. We wait for it to cure. The next day we come back and cut those lines into the resin, but not all the way through it. We cut just a little notch in the, in the resin. And then we take the same material and fill that notch with contrasting materials. So in this case, it was black. Sometimes the ship owner might want white or beige or some other color, depending on even gray, depending on what their particular preference is. And then after that's all done, then we sand the surface and you get that texture and that finish that you see. Very cool. Very cool. And you've noticed that uh, these teak imitation floors have become uh, quite popular recently, haven't they? Why is that, do you think? Because, um, if I can reply, Mike, sorry. Um, actually, it became the standard in the cruise industry because the when you compare resin flooring, which imitates the teak, with the real teak, you have a number of advantages. And first of all, and one of the most important is, there is more than one, one of the most important is the weight. Because a full resin system uh, is much lighter than uh, a real teak uh, uh, system. Also because it's, it is thinner and the material themselves are lighter in the sense that they have a uh, um, lighter density. Another, one of the biggest um, feature that I mentioned before is the fact that it's a seamless application. Uh, the seamless application, the, the seamless flooring will protect the steel deck underneath against corrosion. Consider that a real tea, which is very beautiful, no complaints, but the planks of the real teak are sealed with a black caulking. And many times, uh, after some years after the application, the black caulking is getting old and it lost its elasticity 
therefore you it's cracking and when it cracks and and the water goes the water reach every enter in every single uh small horrifice so the water can go down and corrode the steel so these are the two big advantages of uh, of uh, of resin nowadays that makes uh, um, the ship owners and the shipyard, uh, you know, move towards a resin a resin application. The third one is durability, and the fourth one is maintenance, because mm. resin flooring is more durable and the maintenance is easier than tick imitation. So these are all pros that go for a resin installation. Oh, I can imagine. And you talk about uh, durability and the maintenance. I'm I'm just picturing all those uh, yeah. drinks and all the food yeah. that gets spilled yeah. on these floors, and and cleaning it would just be oh so much easier if it's resin. Uh, boy, um, does it get slippery? The resin. I can I can answer that. Actually, Please. the 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 polyurethane resins, by their very design, are designed to be non-slip. So we incorporate elements into the mixture that'll actually make the mixture be more uh, slip resistant, even when wet. And this is tested regularly. And we can also apply some of the sealers we talked about to even add traction to it, even more traction. So we can enhance the traction by texturing it with sanding. We can apply sealers or we can leave it uh, raw and just smooth. And it's still, even while it's, it's a rubber decking material. So it, it's, if you think about it, many, many shoes are made out of rubber materials or polyurethane. The advantage to that polyurethane is it really has very good traction. Right, that's a, that's a good comparison, yeah. All right. Um... So I'm trying to think if you were to uh, want to put this over existing tiles or existing flooring, is that a possibility? Uh, let me reply on that. Typically, uh, it's something that we do not uh, suggest in the sense that resin is very versatile and, and the resin top coat can be applied on top of another resin um flooring like i showed before when uh, on the jogging track of the carnival miracle so resin with resin it's possible resin with traditional material it's something i would not suggest so typically um we remove uh, whatever is existing an old traditional floor can be tiles can be um a real teak and we start uh, uh, after the area has been removed, we start with the surface preparation and with all the layers, like I described before. Gotcha. And um, so you would need an underlayment each time or not? Basically, I mean, if you are thinking to a replacement of a traditional flooring, Yes, I would need it because I'm gonna remove everything. And I'm not only removing the top coat, in this case, let's say um, a tile flooring, but I'm gonna remove the tile, the cement underneath, up to steel. So if I go up to steel, I will always need an underlayment to level the unevenness of the steel deck. In case I have a rising flooring to be resurfaced, it's just a matter to sand the existing flooring do some repairs on the resin flooring if needed and then go on top with a new uh, top coat which uh, as i said before has an average thickness of three to five millimeters typically that's that's a fantastic explanation thank you um well a few more seconds to see if anybody has any other questions and um I think this has been a really great uh, webinar. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, I appreciate you spending time with us and we appreciate you in the audience spending time with us. We know that uh, your days are very full, especially lately. And um, I, we 
genuinely do appreciate that you've taken the time to spend some time with us. So we look forward to seeing you next time. And uh, with that, we'll say goodbye. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, everybody. Thank you.